Workaholics. Today we are going to learn and study another important and informative topic of microeconomics. So we are going to understand what is the difference between movement along the demand curve and shift in the demand curve. This is a very popular, highly demanded question that almost every student asks in a microeconomics class. And obviously you all would be urging to understand why exactly uh, there's a difference between movement along and what do we mean by movement along and what is shift and are these two different words uh, so let's understand what is the difference between movement along the same demand curve and shift in the demand curve, right? So let's begin. So let's begin with the movement along the demand curve. Okay, so we are going to start with the concept of movement. Here, when we talk about movement, we are talking about the same demand curve. So same demand curve meaning that if we have the quantity demanded okay and price okay price on the y-axis quantity demanded on the x-axis you have a demand curve now before drawing the demand curve let's just draw a simple scale of events okay let's say uh, price we will talk about price in a five interval so 0 to 5 10 15 20 25 correct then similarly for quantity demanded let's say we are talking about in the intervals of 10 so 10 20 30 40 let's keep it very simple okay now let's say that you are uh, wanting to purchase chocolates okay so now when you purchase chocolates there is let's say um, the price of chocolates is 10 rupees okay you are purchasing any brand of chocolate that you like and at 10 rupees you can purchase 20 chocolates okay how many chocolates 20 chocolates right so imaginarily I will put a point at this place right now, let's say that the price of these chocolates increased because maybe there's a festival season and uh, they have incorporated nuts and dry fruits in that chocolate. So, the, uh, that particular brand's price increased. Increased to, let's say, 25 rupees. So, now something that was coming at 10 rupees is now 25 rupees. Okay. Uh, obviously, because of this increase, what will happen when the price hikes the quantity demanded decreases because of the law of demand inverse relationship so at 25 rupees people are only purchasing 10 chocolates they are purchasing only 10 chocolates so here we have another point okay another point here all right now at i'll draw this point from some red marker so that you understand it okay now let's draw this demand curve from this line this point okay now this is a demand curve okay no matter how it looks it should be downward sloping it can be a straight line a curved line does not matter much okay you need to know that the points should be connected properly so at the same demand curve let's call this demand curve d1 Okay, so on the same demand curve, now what is happening that when the price is 25, quantity demanded is 10. So consumers who are purchasing these uh, chocolates, when the chocolate price is 25, they are purchasing 10 chocolates. Okay, the demand curve is showcasing this demand, right, at this point A. However, when the price declines or when initially the price was 10, uh, the chocolates that were consumed were 20, right? So, at the point B, on the same demand curve, you have both the points. Why is it that both of these points are at the same demand curve? Now, the reason why this is true is because when we talk about the movement along the demand curve, we are technically 
we are technically talking about the changes in the quantity demanded right and why are we talking about the changes in the quantity demanded who what is the factor behind the change in the quantity demanded the price right so the price of that same commodity which determines whether the quantity demanded should increase or decrease is the major factor uh, that changes and because of that the movement happens in the demand curve right so the first thing that you need to note very importantly is that when the commodities self price changes and because of that there is a change in the quantity demanded of that commodity then there will be movement in the demand curve or movement along the demand curve right so why this movement is taking place on the same demand curve because and we are not drawing any other demand curve new demand curve nahi draw kar rahe hain reason kya hai because we are talking about the same commodities price and when the price changes what is the impact on the quantity demanded is shown from that movement now there can be two types of movement right either there can be extension or there can be contraction extension now extension and contraction are on the basis of quantity demanded please remember please note over here that both of them are related to the quantity demanded so if i say that when you go from point a sorry when you go from point a to b okay so what happened that when the price dropped the quantity demanded increased while going from point a to b so when we talk about point a to b where the quantity demanded expanded okay so that is called as extension of demand okay and you can also call it expansion of demand okay the reason why we can call it expansion is because technically the quantity demanded is expanding because of the drop in price vice versa when we go from point b to a now when we are going from b to a what is happening the price has gone up from 10 rupees to 25 rupees when the price is more quantity demanded is less and when it is less so what happens contraction of demand okay so these are the two important words that you need to remember while learning about the movement along the demand curve now we are going to understand the concept of shift in the demand curve now let's understand about the concept of shift shift um as a matter of fact means re to reposition right so technically position of the demand curve is getting changed okay so it's no more regarding the quantity demanded it is practically the whole demand curve that is shifting but why is it shifting so shift is caused when the demand for a commodity changes okay because a change has been shown from any other factor other than the price so here the demand demand for demand for clothing demand for shoes demand for cosmetics demand for specs demand for watches demand for e education okay demand for books demand for any xyz commodity that you can purchase from the market okay the demand curve will shift for that commodity if we are uh, instead of looking at the price of the commodity and the changes in the price of the commodity we are looking at all the other factors around it okay so what are, what can be the factors around it the price of
substitute commodity, right? Some commodity that can be substituted for that commodity. So price of the substitute. Then we can talk about income. If there is change in income, whether it's in a greater change in income or a lesser change in income, which means that if the income is falling or rising, can also have an impact on the whole demand, right? Taste and preferences. Taste and preferences also change over time. Then climate factors, climatic factors. These days, climatic factors also contribute a lot to the consumer behavior. People purchase different types of items just because they might be climate friendly, eco friendly, or they might not. Uh, so that is also one of the factors. Okay, uh, government interventions. Government policies may have a certain impact on the taxes of certain commodities. Okay, let's say uh, for that matter, tobacco or liquor, uh, alcohol may have um, a contribution of higher amount of taxes in GST and many more taxes, penalization, um, you know, penalties and other uh, different taxes because of which that the final price might be hiked or it can change and because of it there's a there can be an impact on the whole demand right so the factor or the factors other than the price when they change they may cause a shift in the demand curve right so now let's take a simple example to understand this we have quantity demanded and we have price okay and there was a certain demand okay for um, commodities let's say there, there's a certain demand for plastic spoons so there are so many food stores that you may go to there are so many restaurants so ma so many food trucks they provide those plastic spoons now because of climatic factors and people now are more eco friendly and people are more into um, we'll carry our own spoons we'll carry our own steel bottles okay we are going to be uh, plastic averse so now there was a certain d1 demand for these pl this plastic spoon but now that the consumer behavior is more sensitive towards climatology and climate Im climatic impact and global warming what has happened now there's a drastic drop in the demand whole demand for plastic spoons and because of that there is a backward shift there's a backward shift or a leftward shift okay or a downward shift in the whole demand curve so when the whole demand curve shifts towards a certain position then that is related to different other factors other than the price of that commodity right similarly if we talk about uh, on the similar lines if we talk about wooden spoons okay so the price of articles uh, whether we talk about wooden spoons or wooden plates okay or cane plates or anything that is more biodegradable okay if the demand for that has ri risen more and more and more so even if the price of these articles is still constant the price has not changed for the plastic spoons or for wooden spoons but because of the other factors around it uh, related to climatology and global warming the demand curve has shifted so probably the price is constant okay the price is constant but the demand now for wooden and other biodegradable articles uh, in the food industry has increased and that has led to a forward shift in the demand curve right so now if we look at the 
shift in the demand curve what do we see we see that we are talking about the changes in the whole demand unlike movement in the demand curve where we talked about quantity demanded here we are not actually um, concerned about the quantity demanded because we are not concerned about the price of the commodity but instead all the other factors around it because of which we are talking about the holistic demand and that has two impacts there's a backward shift and there's a forward shift the backward shift will happen when other factors contribute to the reduction in the whole demand and forward shift will happen when other factors contribute to a hike or an increase in the demand okay so here you can also use the word decrease and increase okay and here you can also use the words expansion and contraction okay so um, this is the specific way in which you need to address two different impacts in the concept of law of demand and uh, in the concept of theory of demand in microeconomics specifically while writing answers and while understanding various real life concepts also so this was it for today and we will have more such informative lessons in microeconomics and many more modules very soon till then stay tuned to ecoholics bye bye